Hanshi Kiwa, hello, how are you all? Welcome to Homelands, originally broadcast on CFCR Community Radio 90.5 FM in Saskatoon, Homelands of the Métis and Treaty 6 Territory, CFCR.ca. This is your favorite auntie, Andrea Letting Dishne Kashun. My name is Andrea Letting, call me Auntie Andy if you like, and I'll be your host over this next half hour. I'm part settler, part relative, and 100% ally in relation to everyone. I'm just me, not a card carrying member of any indigenous nation, but I am loved, adopted, related to, and accepted by many, rejected by a few, but haters gonna hate and relators gonna relate. I am blessed to have indigenous relations in my family and secretly may love them a little bit more than all the rest, only because they are the first peoples of this land who welcome all the guests. But I also have some Irish and some Scandinavian and a little bit of mystery. And that's the way I was raised strongly anti-colonial and justice oriented with a big related heart for all. Uh, I most empathized with my Batash Métis friends and family and that history and culture growing up, and as an adult have continued to try and live that Mio win that beautiful good life. So from the fringes of the sash, I situate myself as a relative and an ally and welcome you, my listeners, as brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins in the homelands. So let's welcome our relative tonight. So we have with us Adrian Sutherland. And he is a roots rock recording artist with heart from Attawapiskat First Nation on the James Bay. So we'll be looking forward to talking all about what it's like out at Attawapiskat. And you've you've heard, you know, Attawapiskat was in the news, you know, in the last couple of years. And yeah, it'll it'll be a really interesting discussion. But we'll have some music as well. We're going to open up with a song. So he's a singer, songwriter, musician, reader, writer, speaker, and advocate. He's a father of four, a grandfather of four, a traditional knowledge keeper, and a respected cultural leader fluent in Mushkegawak Creek. After building his own recording studio in a sea can out of necessity during the pandemic, Adrian completed tracking for debut album, When the Magic Hits, which and scored his first television series, and began writing his first book for Penguin Random House Canada. The fascinating frontman and founder of all Cree rockers Midnight Shine, Adrian released four albums with the band before shifting to solo projects in 2019. Adrian cares deeply about many causes and is using his music and voice to share firsthand perspective on issues facing First Nations like contaminated water, which of course, you know, that was where Attawapiskat came in with Chief Tree Spence and all that kind of thing. And, um, you know, housing shortages, food insecurity, addiction, and mental health. At a time of growing awareness about reconciliation, Adrian is hopeful for Canadians to better understand one another and take further steps together. So welcome, Adrian, and thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be here. So awesome. So we'll start, we'll just start with your, um, with your song and then you can, you know, tell us more about it. So looking forward to that. So yeah. Okay. Um, So I just got to get the right uh, screen up and, um, and here we go. Technology. Okay. So big city dreams by Adrian Sutherland. Here we go. Sometimes things get 
That, that song was actually magic hits so <laughs> yeah i noticed that as the um as the song played i went that's not uh that's not big city dreams <laughs> that was <laughs> magic hits but yeah <laughs> um so did you did you want to um talk about that or talk yeah about yeah your, yeah absolutely um yeah magic hits was a song collaboration between myself and matt and chris gormley um, two brothers that are Toronto-based and musicians and songwriters. Uh, we've been writing together for a little while now, and um, we've had some really good chemistry uh, as songwriters and collaborating. And this is where this song came from. For for me, it uh, it's a song about, I guess, having uh, uh, something that you work really, really hard for um, for for quite some time. Um, and uh, it's kind of, I think a lot of people can relate to it. Um, my own, my own, I guess, personal uh, ex experience, I guess, with music has been um, for the last decade, um, sort of feeling like I've been standing on the sidelines, you know, um, sort of off, off uh, in the distance a little bit from, from everything else that's been going on, uh, you know, with that, um, that goal or, you know, those, those things that are sort of just within grasp, you know, within reach. Um, so that's kind of where the this song comes from. And then um, in the last little while, the, um, you know, things have been going really well with the album. And um, it's certainly been, it's certainly been a very, I guess, a magical experience for me, um, getting all the support and uh, how well that this album has been received. And uh, so that's kind of what it means for me, this song. That's beautiful. Tell us about your journey into music. How was it always there for you or was there uh, people that influenced you? And Yeah, music's been, been a big part of my life uh, for as long as I can remember um, from being a young boy uh, in kindergarten, grade one. Uh, I always had records um, in the house. We had a record player. My mom played guitar so she was always on the guitar you know jamming something out um, she also played the organ for a little while and she she would be on that thing too learning songs and just playing and performing for our family and sometimes in community uh, co during community events she would go out and play um, so that was probably my earliest memory and earliest uh, influence in music 
And later, of course, most of my family, the older men, like my uncles and um, relatives that were always very musical. They were, you know, they, they had the fiddle. Um, they, they all played guitar. Um, and there was always live music going on uh, all the time. Um, they were jamming or they were performing in the local community hall. So those were my really real early experiences. And sort of, for me, it was always, uh, um, I don't know, I guess quite intriguing. I, I always found music uh, fascinating, you know, and I always just kind of watched how these guys performed and played and and uh, thought about, you know, someday me doing the same thing. So, and of course we had uh, other, influ I had other influences like Tom Petty. We had a jukebox here in the community in the local arcade. Um, you know, then you go up and play Tom Petty every night in the arcade pretty much. Uh, the same song over, over and over and over. There was CCR, uh, Neil Young, um, artists like that, that really influenced me early on. Right on. And so um, what are what are some words you would have for other Indigenous musicians and, and those starting out and those, you know, interested? Well, I think... Uh, words I would probably share um, um, it's uh, if you love music and if you have if, if, if it's a passion um, I would say go for it and and uh, you know put, put everything you have into it um, but also be prepared um, to to uh, you know, to be, to, to work hard, extremely hard and to, to be willing to grind it out in, in this industry. Um, I think that uh, early, early on, you know, I get there's lots of learning for a lot of new artists and new musicians that decide that they want to, you know, take a run at this, this industry. Um, so, you know, I did a lot of learning in the first probably five years um, when I decided to uh, make a run at music and, um, you know, I, I learned a lot from that and I think it was it's important to make sure you have the right kind of people that are going to support you and the right people that and surround yourself with people that believe in your music and, and actually love your music and want to project the same kind of support and love back out to you um for me that that was something I think missing early on um and uh once you know once I found the right people and and started building the right team um uh, things started to you know slowly move in an upward trajectory I guess um and and uh it, the other thing I learned that this industry is really uh I mean you can have all the talent in the world um but if you don't if you don't have those relationships in place um and those connections with people in the industry um it's, it's not going to really really mean a whole lot um so it's important to to build up those relationships and build up those teams that, that need to support you and help get your music out there into the world. Uh, Cause I, I know that the, this industry is really built on relationships. So that, that's very important for people. Um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'm 10 years into it now when I decided to, to go at it and it's, it's uh, yeah, I think I'm at a point now where um I feel like I've been banging on a door for a little while now, you know, on the doorstep. <laughs> I just won't go away. And uh, I think people are starting to, to just open doors now and, you know, sort of in the room. Uh, it's kind of what it feels like. So it's, it's a good place to be. And there's still a lot of work ahead. And uh, I still have um, a lot of uh, music left in me. And I want to continue to create and, and share that music. Right on. So tell us a bit more about some of the other dimensions of your life, like what it's like in Atawapiskat and some of the culture and the language and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, music is really, has always been, like I hear some people say music is their life, you know, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's never been like that. Music is a part of my life and uh, it, sometimes it's, it's a big part of my life, but then other times it's a small part of my life. Uh, I'm, I'm from the, the Arawapiskat uh, First Nation. We're we're um, Cree community on on the James Bay coast. 
So with that comes a whole bunch of cultural obligations. Um, we're a remote flying community. Um, I was raised with the Cree, Cree way, the Cree values. So I still try to continue um, those, those ways and those teachings. Uh, I genuinely try to live, um, you know, the way my parents and my grandparents lived. Not 100%, but um, I still take the time to go out and hunt and uh, bring food home for my family. Uh, we fish, we net. Uh, we bring large game home, small game, uh, waterfowl, geese. Uh, so that's our, that's that's just something we do. It's a big part of what we do. Uh, I chose to raise my family that way, um, and chose to live here and continue to to, to live here today. Even uh, trying to launch a career from from uh, is is, is uh, sometimes seems impossible uh, being so far away from from everything but uh you know so far it's worked out okay um yeah so there's the cultural stuff and i mean there's also uh the spiritual part of it too um my part of my family uh is very spiritual um, they carry ceremonies so we continue that uh, ceremonial life and and it's a big part of our family um, um we also you know, include community members and, and youth and uh, other people in the community as uh, we always include them uh, as part of our yearly ceremonies that we do up here. So that's very important to me. And, uh, you know, with that, sometimes there's come, there, that comes a lot, it comes with a lot of burden too. Um, you know, you have these obligations, uh, ceremonial obligations, cultural obligations, um, you know, many, many layers of responsibility sometimes put on you. Um, so you can see why music sometimes becomes a very small part of what I am and what I do. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then there's just uh, some of the stuff, I guess. Um, uh, and there's just, yeah. So, so tell us a little bit more about the community. Like I know it, you know, it hit the, it kind of hit the headlines a few years back and then we kind of haven't heard too much. So is there any updates? Has the water situation improved? Um well, yeah, well, but since the pandemic hit, everything seemed to just kind of come to a halt, like it, it even, excuse me, um, I haven't really heard anything about the water, and uh, I know I've asked, I, I know that the, the COVID has been hindering the upgrades to our water treatment facility, I know that the the two water dispensaries where we collect our drinking water were replaced, they were, they were brand new, the, the same year of the water crisis, uh, but that's just the extent of my knowledge. Um, I really, be, I don't have any information beyond that. Um, so I, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure when uh, and if we'll uh, going to see the water, the water issues ever go away. Um, I mean, they've been around forever, you know, it's been since I was a boy, you know, that's going like 40 years back now. So that's a very long time uh, to to not have some of these issues resolved. No kidding. What do you what do you see like behind that? You know, when you what do you want people to know about that? Well, I uh, I mean, for me, it, it's it's a lot of different things. You know, it's a lot of emotions, um, frustration. Uh, sometimes I'm angry. Sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I feel like giving up. Um, there's just a lot of different things that kind of come with some of these challenges and issues. Uh, sometimes I feel like no one cares. Um, so uh, I know there's, I, I know that these are all issues that can be dealt with and resolved. I know, um, but I mean, I don't, I don't have personally i don't have a lot of power you know to make that kind of change uh i certainly don't have a lot of money so, <laughs> so if i did you know i would you know i you know, i would be all over that and i'd be trying to to help come up with solutions um so it really we're at the mercy of governments and chief and councils and and and, and all of that uh sh you know all that shenanigans for sure. It's a, it's a frustrating situation. And like you said, it's been going on for a long time. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we have just like just under uh, 10 minutes left. So 
Um, do, you, do you want to introduce this song or do you want to just play it and talk about it afterwards? Um, I'll play the right song this time. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just introduce the song and the title of it. Um, and then uh, we can talk about it after. Thank you. So this this next song is called uh, Big City Dreams. It, it was uh, came. Um, it's the first song on the album, actually, uh, the solo debut solo album. Right on. So here we go. Big City Dreams. start this again. Don't know what's going on. Spirit. 
Awesome. Wow. I think it's still playing here. I gotta turn it off now. <laughs> Going through the whole playlist. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Adrian. Is there anything else that you wanted to say about that song or um well yeah, it was uh um I guess I mean I I like visiting the big city and stuff like that. And I think when I was writing that song with uh, I was another co-write that I did, uh, it was really um uh, in a way, um, I guess I it was sort of going in the direction of like somebody who's dreaming about going to the big city someday and having these big dreams, but ends ends up realizing that they actually, um, you know, um, prefer to be at home where the path was always there, you know, under their feet, and they just never saw it. So it's it's kind of one of those songs that kind of goes off a little, into a little bit of a different spin or story. So, but uh, yeah, it goes back to when I was young, I guess, um, watching videos uh, on TV and music videos, and and then having this dream someday that I would be on the stage in a big city somewhere. Um, it's kind of where the idea came from. Nice, and I loved. There were so many, so, so many. I, I love the line. I, my sons have their fathers, uh, or my father's eyes, and just there's some really lovely, lovely writing in there, lovely language, and very evocative. So, well, we're we're actually at the end of our uh, our, our half hour here. So, thank you so much, Adrian, for joining us tonight. Um, Kishi Marcy to uh, Adrian Sutherland, musician from Atawapiskat. Uh, Ni Wagamaganak, all my relations. And believe me, we are all related. So act like you've got relations. This is Auntie Andy signing out from Homelands. Uh, originally produced on CFCR Community Radio 90.5 FM in Saskatoon, Homelands of the Métis and Treaty 6 Territory, CFCR.ca. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Métis Homelands. Uh, email Homelands at gmail.com. And view this episode on our YouTube channel, Homelands. Marcy, thank you for listening. And Koshi, Kawapa, Kawapa Matina Wilmina. That's all. We'll see you later. Thank you so much.